Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Everybody is well. Baruch Hashem. How, how's it going with you, honey? Good. Baruch Hashem. Thank God. We're doing well. Um, so usually we learn Pirkei Avos this evening. Um, but since it is almost the third of Tammuz, the anniversary of the art site of the passing of the Rebbe on the third day of Tammuz. So we're going to uh, we're going to spend this hour focusing upon the life of the Rebbe and the impact that the Rebbe has had on us until now and um, where we must go forward with all of this in our own lives. So at, at, in the evening when it gets dark, it's already will be the third day of Tammuz, Gimel Tammuz. And um, it's hard to believe, but it's 26 years since the passing of the Rebbe. Um, my husband and I had been in Boca for just a few years, a couple of years, um, more than a couple, maybe four years, I think, that we were here. And, um, and we know that a yard site is a very important date because the Nashamas uh, that lived in this world continue to, to rise in, in, in Shamayim, in heaven, and a tzaddik that a righteous person that had such an impact on this world their impact becomes even stronger on the anniversary. And that's why I thought it would be a good thing to do, in addition to talking about the life of the Rebbe and our connection, is to start, first of all, by talking about how to maximize the holiness, the greatness of the day of a yard site, and specifically the yard site of, of the Rebbe. It's because of the Rebbe that we are here in Boca Raton, me, I'm talking about my family, that, uh, that we, we came here as emissaries of the Rebbe over 30 years ago. And, um, and really and truly, even though it's been already 26 years that we don't have the Rebbe physically with us, but we really continue not only to see the Rebbe's strength and blessings, but Actually, as we mentioned earlier, we really see it in a very, very powerful and strong way. Um, we recently finished a beautiful course in the Rosh Chodesh Society. It's a seven uh, class course. And this year we do it yearly. It's part of, it's a branch of the JLI, the Rosh Chodesh Society is the women's branch of the JLI. And this year, the course was called Insight. And over the, over the seven classes, we looked at different areas of life and what the Rebbe said about it and taught us how to look in a very novel and amazing way on all kinds of uh, of, of philosophical and practical parts of, of life. 
And, um, and the last class that we had recently, we spoke about leadership and how the Rebbe wanted to create not followers, really, but leaders. Um, and what we'll touch upon tonight really is how connecting ourselves to the Rebbe and to his life and to his teachings really empowers us to continue the work that we started while the Rebbe was physically with us and how actually we have the ability to connect in an even stronger way now that, um, now that the Neshama is not connected to a body. So um, how can we connect? What is it about the day of Gimel Tamas that gives us an opportunity that we don't really want to let the day pass and not take up this opportunity. So I'm going to give a, a, a couple of a few things that we can do that can help us to connect to the Rebbe. Um, the first thing, which is really a, a, a very easy thing, I was going to say simple, but there's really nothing simple about it, is that tonight we can all light a yard site candle. Um, and this is, this is a, a, an amazing thing to do for an ashama, to light a candle. Because what is it? An ashama comes down into this world to reveal godliness, to bring the light of Hashem into this world. And... Um, and so lighting a, a yard site candle brings this light into the world and connects us as we light this in, in, in honor of the Rebbe, gives us a connection to, to the Rebbe. So that's one thing that we can do. Another very strong way of connecting to the Rebbe is to learn from the Rebbe's teachings. We are so fortunate that we live in a time where there are so many avenues to do this. Um, we can open up a Chumash and um, if we have the, uh, the Chumash that, had, that is from Kahas that has the teachings of the Rebbe or we can go to Chabad.org and find uh, different Torah thoughts. Every single parasha has Torah thoughts on that. We, we don't have a shortage of ways of learning the teachings of, uh, of the Rebbe, whether it's books in any kind of language that we would like translated. And a beautiful thing we had spoken about in the Tehillim class is that when we learn the words, of a tzaddik, like for example, we were speaking in the Tehillim class, when we say the words that David HaMelech wrote, that King David wrote the words of the Tehillim, that in the grave, David HaMelech's lips move, that we give that continuation of life in this physical world. So learning the teachings of the Rebbe connects us in a very, very, very strong way to the neshama, to the soul of, of the Rebbe. Um, we can add something in our prayers over the next day, whether it's to Hillim, whether it's part of the morning prayers or the evening prayers, that is a, a good thing to do. Another suggestion is to partner with the Rebbe in his efforts to bring Yiddishkeit in the sense of giving tzedakah 
which one can do to the many, many, many um, organizations that are throughout the entire world. And again, today we have the opportunity even to be able to do it over the internet if we want. If we don't want to do it that way, we can, we can, um, we can do it in a, in, in, in put aside Sadaka and, and give it at a later date. Oftentimes we have spoken about the 10 mitzvah campaign that the Rebbe um, instituted over his, the years of his leadership and to maybe try and get involved a on a personal level strengthening our own service in these areas and b to bring the teachings to others so i'll just briefly go through the 10 mitzvah campaigns um that is that jewish girls and women should light sharpest candles before Shabbos and Yom Tov. So a woman who has been married lights two, a single girl lights one. Um, some women have the custom to light for additional children. So they'll light more than two, but at least two. Um, so in addition to us lighting the Shabbos candles and beautifying the way we do this mitzvah, also to reach out to other Jewish women and bring the lighting of the Shabbos candles to other women. And um, for men to put tefillin on every day, every weekday. So not on Shabbos and not on holidays, but men should put on tefillin. And, and um, anybody who's come across Chabadniks have seen women out there bringing Shabbos candles to the world, men out there putting tefillin on the men. Hi, sweetheart. And um, um, the third mitzvah campaign is Abba Sisral, that we should improve in loving one another. And just to make mention, this week's Parsha is Korach. We spoke about it in this morning's class. And um, Korach went up against Moshe Rabbeinu, about, uh, against Moses. And basically there was a mutiny in the camp. But what was so terrible about this sin was that it caused and brought about a division amongst the Jewish people. And to Hashem, this is, was even more intolerable than the sin of the golden calf, which was idolatry, which we know is one of the three cardinal sins. That's the three sins that a person should rather give up their life for. But uh, division is, is, is a terrible thing. Division, machlokes, arguments between two people is really a terrible, terrible thing. So this is something that we could try and improve upon to avoid having arguments and and separation between people and try to bridge gaps especially this week as we celebrate the life of the rebbe whose whose Ava Sisro, whose love for for his fellow jew and his love of humanity for all people in the world was uh, and is, is is notorious so this is an area that we can improve on um, the next campaign was the campaign that every person should have a kosher mezuzah on all of their doorposts. So, um, and in order to know that the mezuzah is kosher, we need to check them periodically. And um, this is something that if you haven't had your mezuzahs checked in a while, something you can contact your local rabbi and get help with that, or your local Rebbitson, or any friend, and make sure that the mezuzahs you already have are kosher. If you don't have enough mezuzahs, maybe now it's time to add some more. And again, the Rebbe wanted not only that we should improve in these areas, but also we should share the wealth. So um, 
The next mitzvah campaign is kashrus, to that a, a Jewish person should eat kosher food and have a kosher kitchen where the dishes of milk and meat are separate, where the dishes that we use, that we buy before we use them, we toivel them, we immerse them in a mikvah. There are many um, parts to the laws of kashrus, and now would be a good time for us to improve in that area, and again, also to reach out to our friends. The next campaign is Torah study, studying Torah. And one would have thought that now, when we can't get to our shuls and we can't get to our schools, that this is something that would suffer. But we know that in actuality, even though it may be a little bit of a challenge, learning on the computer and having to look at a screen and to really try and look beyond the screen into each other's hearts and souls, but there is a mila, there is something that is good even more than when we get together. Yes, of course, we're missing that aspect of getting together personally, but we always have to look at the positives, right? As Chassidim of the Rebbe, we were taught to be positive always and to find the positives. And one of the positives is that since we don't have to be in person, we now can connect to many more classes because so many shuls and, and individuals are giving class on the computer and many of them are being recorded. So we actually can go back when we find it difficult to sleep at night or we are, are we home and we have some extra time, we can learn even more than we were able to in, in the past and maybe even have access to the kind of learning that we, we maybe wouldn't have had. Um, the next campaign the Rebbe brought up was that a Jewish home should be filled with Jewish books. So even though we can download so much and we can print it up on paper, that's wonderful and that's good, but we should have Jewish books in our home because the Jewish books contain words of Torah and that's holy. That's something that we, um, we should surround ourselves with holiness and the books in the home, bring that in, bring us into that environment. So slowly we can add a little bit at a time. We should never feel we've got enough books. We should always be adding to our library. And of course it helps to read them as well. Gives us lots of uh, soul food. Um, Sadaka. The Rebbe encouraged us not just to give tzedakah, but it should be in a daily occurrence that every single day we should have coins or bills. It doesn't matter how we do it, but it should be something that we do daily, except for on Shabbos and Yom Tov. And then on Erev Shabbos and Yom Tov, we should give um, double before so that we cover for the days that we're that we're going to miss. Um, because Sudaka is chesed and it's a very special kind of chesed and it really brings the ge'ula, brings the redemption closer. Um, and Taras HaMishpacha, which is family purity, the laws of married life. And um, this is, including the laws of the mikvah, which is for married couples. And in addition to this, the Jewish atmosphere, the holy atmosphere in the home, which really is something that the woman in the home is very, very responsible for. And, um, and so this was the core group of mitzvah campaigns. And you can look further into these things and learn more about them. 
and share them with, with your friends. In this way, we bring great light into the world. Just a word of encouragement coming from the Rebbe constantly that we should never underestimate the reception to, to, to these ideas and to these concepts. The Torah was given to every single one of us. And every single Jew has an ashama, has a soul, and every single Jew is connected to the Torah and to the mitzvahs. We should never ever think that there's a person that is not going to be receptive to the invitation to learn about and to practice these beautiful things. It's all about how we present it. So we have to know who we're coming to. We have to come in a sensitive way and in a way that we know will be received in, in a good way. Words that come from the heart enter the heart. And if we're coming with love and we're coming to bring something to somebody that, that we know they will be receptive, then that's exactly what's going to happen. Then they will be they will be receptive. So um, I'm going to try now just to show you a little video. Now the video clip that I'm going to show to you now is just a small, um, a small presentation about the life of the Rebbe, very, very small. And it's the beginning of a long program that the office sent out today. You should have received it. Hi, Chaya. Welcome back. Chaya just came back from giving out the books for the uh, positivity bias plug. Anybody that hasn't signed up yet and would like to still sign up, I think we have some books left, right? Chaya? Yeah? Thank you. Um, so um, let me get this. And um, you will have received an email if you're on the email list. If you're not, you can text me and I can send you the link. And it's something that you can play tonight, tomorrow, it's many, many beautiful things connecting to Gimel Tamas. So I'm just going to begin with, uh, oh yeah, of course it's not showing up. Hmm. Why not? I'm going to try. Honey, yes. honey. Yes. Sorry, it's, it's Leah. I'm, I'm I, not on Zoom. Could you give me an idea of what the video is? Just an idea quickly, just like yes, in it's, five it's words. Walking, yeah, it looks like I might not be able to get it anyway. Um, it's not sharing the right, uh, the right thing. Uh, hold on, let me see. This is here. No. Okay, let's try this. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is this. I think this is it. Hang on. Okay, give me a second. That, that was it. Uh, Whatever you did, that, that was it. There you go. Can you see it? No. Okay, so let me go back to the like Whatever you did before, it was there for a split moment. Okay, so hold on a sec. Let me go back to the Zoom. Let me go share screen. Optimize. Here it is. Yep, you got it. Okay. So, um, but you will hear the words. Okay, so if you don't have the screen, you're going to hear the words. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The Rebbe's vision of a perfect tomorrow. The story of the Rebbe's life parallels the story of Judaism in the 20th century. He was born in Tsarist Russia 
at the turn of the century, a descendant of the first Rebbes of Chabad. He survived the murderous pogroms that swept through Tsarist Russia in the early 1900s. As the communist revolution began to take root and power was seized by the Bolsheviks, he watched his parents walk the halls of power fighting for the rights of Jews and Judaism. As a teenager during World War I, his home was a center of relief efforts for the tens of thousands of Jewish refugees who flooded their city. In his 20s, he met and studied with the Torah giants of his times. He married the daughter of the sixth Lubavitcher Rebbe in a wedding attended by Jewish leaders from far and near. Living in Berlin during Hitler's rise to power, he witnessed firsthand a modern society turning against the Jews within it. He left Paris only days ahead of the Nazi advance into the city, then crossed the Atlantic on one of the last civilian vessels to leave warlocked Europe. When he arrived, his father-in-law placed him at the helm of Lubavitch's newly founded educational, social, and publishing departments. As the center of world Jewry shifted to the United States, he became the leader of the Lubavitch Hasidic movement. At the time, his strategy was considered risky, even dangerous. He taught his followers, in addition to focusing inward on improving themselves, to bring Judaism outward, pioneering the concept of modern Jewish outreach. As hundreds of thousands of Jewish pioneers moved to the Holy Land, he engaged and corresponded with their leaders. During peace and conflict, he embraced the people and the land of Israel. In evolving attitudes and trends, he managed to identify a yearning for something higher, endeavoring to quench the thirst with increased spirituality and morality. Under the noses of brutal dictators, he ran a network of clandestine operatives. As Jews began to enjoy a freedom unseen in hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, he proclaimed that moral people must be a light unto their neighbors, promoting the seven universal laws for all of humanity. In a century which saw more scientific advances than thousands of years before it, he embraced what others shunned, encouraging that technology be used in the service of its creator. As travel and communication made the world smaller, he inspired thousands to reach out to their brethren in love, as they had once been chased down in hatred. The Rebbe spoke precious little about himself, so his life has never been properly documented. Rather, it is impressed on the hearts and minds of those who encountered him through the years. After his passing in 1994, the story of his life continues through the countless lives he has touched and inspired. It is my Okay. So I'm going to stop over there. That is um, up on our website. You have received a, a link to that, and you can continue to watch it tonight, tomorrow, at your own pace. Um, one other thing that I didn't, uh, well, lots of things I didn't mention, but one that I'd like to mention is also Gimel Tamas is a good time to write into the Ohel and to ask for a bracha, even though if you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's good to be able to go to the, to the grave of the Rebbe. But um, lucky for us, we live in a time where we can do this virtually and, um, and we should do it. It's a good thing to do. If you go to Ohel Chabad, um, Ohel Chabad, you can um, click on the menu where it says write a letter and it just then you, it, it'll take you to the form to fill out where it tells you to put in your name and your mother's name and then you can ask for a bracha, ask for a blessing. 
And not only just to ask for a blessing, but the Rebbe liked, likes to hear good things from us. So if you're inspired enough and you've decided that you want to improve in a certain area, you want to do something to give the Rebbe's nachas and to inform him of uh, something good that you would like to um, add and bring into, into your life. Now, while it is true that Gimel Tamas marks the physical passing of the Rebbe, but the Rebbe left so much in this world for us to hang on to and to learn from and instructions of what we need to do. It was on a, a Tuesday evening in the year 1992 that the last teaching that the Rebbe gave out, he, he actually handed out to men, women and children that came to, to receive a printed discourse from the Rebbe. And this was the last printed discourse that the Rebbe gave out. It's entitled the Atta to Save. And um, it was actually a discourse that he received from the previous Rebbe mm -hmm. and uh, from the Friedrich Rebbe. And um, so many of the teachings in here are so relevant and so needed. And um, you can also go to Chabad.org and find this um, th this. Uh, discourse over there, but just to touch upon uh, uh, a few of the lessons and the messages in this discourse that the Rebbe gave out. By the way, if you want to find um, the discourse, um, I'm actually looking at one article from Chabad.org, which is entitled, Four Teachings the Rebbe Gave Us to Live By. So if you put into Chabad.org in the search four teachings the Rebbe gave us to live by, you'll get this abridged version. And then you'll also see other topics, similar topics, if you want to go further into it. So the first thing is um, the Rebbe spoke about the, the role of a leader. And again, look at the connection between the Parsha this week and, and Gimel Tamas. The role of a Jewish leader. What's the role of a Jewish leader of a Rebbe? It's to nourish the faith of the Hasidim, but not just the Hasidim, but actually of the entire nation and to bring out the essential neshama, the essential soul of every single one of us, because that part of our neshama, that part of us is actually what binds us to each other and makes us one. We talk about Am Yisrael, the Jewish nation being one nation connected. What is it that, that connects us? We know if we, we walk into a room, we can see such diversity, people from different communities, people with different upbringings, people with different customs, different languages, the different political views and so on. But there is something that is unique on the one hand and on the other hand, there is an aspect that unites us. And the aspect that unites us is the neshama is the soul, is the essential part of every single Jew. And the Rebbe and the, the, the leader of a generation has the ability to ignite that essential spark and thus unite us all at, as one. Having said that, it's also important to realize that the success of every leader 
depends on every single one of us because we spoke here about the unity of every member of Klal Yisrael, of every member of the Jewish nation. And to be able, first of all, to really bring out the essential part of ourselves, of each of us, even though the leader of a generation can really get that going, but it's up to each and every single one of us to complete that and to really run away with that ignition and to be able to transform ourselves and bringing out that essential neshama, that essential soul. In addition to that, it's crucial and vital that the people that the, 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 the people of each generation realize that we have a collective responsibility. And again, we just spoke about this in the last class of the Rosh Chodesh Society, where we don't just say, oh, that is the job of the leader. That is the job of a Rebbe. That is the job of a Tzaddik. It's not my job to be responsible for others. It's not my job to ignite the neshama of others. No, the Rebbe said that each and every single one of us are needed and it's crucial that we all take that responsibility. So like we said earlier, the Rebbe didn't want to create followers. The Rebbe wanted to create leaders. So um, that was uh, one point that is brought out in that discourse from the Rebbe. Another point in that discourse is that um, throughout our history, uh, we have had many, many generations that have lived under great oppression and great difficulty to the point where in order to maintain our Jewish identity and our connection to Hashem, our ancestors have very often had to give up their lives for the sanctification of God's name. We actually just had a beautiful talk by uh, Jeannie Milgram. We spoke about the, the Spanish Inquisition, which spanned over many, many years. How many Jews were burned at the stake. And um, the Rebbe spoke about the fact that we are not living under such times, but we have a different challenge. We are living under times where it's so easy because we are living in times where we are free, free to express ourselves, free to live in the way that we want. And with that freedom comes a challenge, the challenge to make the right choices, the challenge to live with the freedom that we have and to choose to recognize God and to recognize holiness and to recognize that our lives have purpose. In a way, it's easier to see that under oppression because, because under oppressive times, there is not plenty in the way of material life. It's an oppressive situation. And that gives a person more of an opportunity to look within. When there is plenty, when there is freedom, when there is peace, sometimes it can be even more of a challenge. And that's something that, um, that, that we face today. But the fact that we face that today really gives us the opportunity to truly choose the right path and the holy path and the good path. And um, the way of course, to do that is to connect to 
our essence to our inner self by nurturing it, by learning, by, by choosing to do more mitzvahs and connecting in a way that allows our neshamas, our souls, to truly shine and that the, the essence comes out and is not hidden by that which is uh, covering it up, which is the physicality. And the last thing that I just want to touch upon briefly is the idea that um, the idea of universal redemption, that the Rebbe spoke about the fact that you know, it's possible for a, a yeah, person. Hurry up and feed them. Yeah. Hurry up. The Rebbe spoke about the fact that um, um, that each neshama, each soul, truly desires to be close to Hashem, to be close to to be close to God. But really. What does the soul truly, truly, truly want and realizes that its purpose in this world here is the redemption? Because the redemption really is about the revelation of Hashem in this, in this world. And it says when Mashiach comes, that the world will be covered with the knowledge of God like the, the sea, cover, right? Like the water covers, covers the ocean. So it's possible that on an individual level, a person can live their lives and, and be a tzaddik or be very great and, and make great spiritual strides in their life. But at the end of the day, an ashama, a soul, realizes that if there isn't universal redemption, if there isn't universal revelation then they then the neshama hasn't truly accomplished what it came down into this world to accomplish and that's why the rebbe really really um uh, brought to the forefront the uh the yearning to bring about the revelation of mashiach that uh, that we should come to the to the day where where we experience the redemption, which is what the redemption means in a just in a short in a short word. The redemption means that the whole world recognizes that there is a God because that becomes very apparent right now in the era of exile. Physicality covers up God in this world. And we are here to reveal that godliness. Every time we do a mitzvah, we draw more godliness into the world and bring in more revelation. But we need to bring the revelation to a tipping point where the... the, the screen that covers up godliness in this world is able to shine through and everybody is able then to see God and to see his presence in this world and then the, the light of God will radiate in the entire world and this is something that is not going to happen for a, a personal individual this has to be something that is for the entire world. And the Rambam, Maimonides, would tell us that, that the way we should view an opportunity to do a mitzvah, to, do a, 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 to fulfill a commandment of God, is that we should view it as that could be the tipping mitzvah. That could be the mitzvah that takes us into that era of where the whole world will be flooded with light. And the Rebbe wanted that each and every single one of us should take this responsibility personally. 
and seriously that as we wake up each morning we should we should say to ourselves this could be the day not because somebody else is going to do it but because this is the day that i am going to make this extra effort to bring about the light in the world and and the rebbe left us with so many pieces of advice on how to do that even if we just start off with the 10 mitzvah campaigns that we spoke about this evening and we we look into those and bring those into our life and the torahs the teachings of torahs that rabbi left for us so much so much advice so much the rabbi didn't just uh, say, you know, we need to do this and didn't tell us how to go about it. The Rebbe really gave us concrete advice uh, uh, and, and ideas that we should, we should be able to make this happen. So if each one of us realizes the connection that we have, especially on Gimel Tamas, to the Rebbe, who had this, this drive to bring about Mashiach and bring an end to all suffering and an end to all evil and to, and, and, and to bring us into this era of light and, and life and goodness. Each one of us has that capability and that ability. If we can connect today on Gimel Thomas, we will receive a greater koyach, a greater strength to bring these things forward into, um, in, into our efforts to be a part of Mashiach. Again, we don't want that Mashiach is something that we're just waiting for and it's, it's, it's an event that's going to happen. Mashiach is something that we all are actively participating in so we just got to get that a little bit a little bit more light and each and every single one of us has that ability to be the one to make it to make it happen i'm, Amen. Going, to, I'm going to conclude with a beautiful story um that that happened in um in my family, um, and it's it's a beautiful uh, a beautiful story. I may have told it before. I've definitely told it before. You may have heard it before, but um, it's always good to tell stories of Sadiqim. It it gives us um, great emuna. It strengthens our faith. It brings us mazel. It brings us bracha. So I'm going to conclude with this, with this story. Many years ago, um, over 40 years ago, um, my, uh, my brother was, having his, was supposed to have his opsha. He was turning three. Now, I say my brother, Kanahara, I have lots of brothers. This was my brother, Ellie. The thing is that his op share, his birthday, fell out during um, the time where we were mourning the loss of a sibling. My parents had lost a child, a young baby. And so as Hasidim would, my parents reached out to the Rebbe and asked the Rebbe what we should do about the celebration. So the Rebbe told my father, who wrote in for this blessing and advice, that if my mother agreed, we should come and do the op share by the Rebbe. We should come to New York. And um, we lived in, in London. And... So we were, Kanahara at that time, six children. And it wasn't like today where you just hopped on a plane. Traveling was not as simple. Well, it's not simple anymore, but it wasn't as common. 
So to get on a plane and to come with six kids was a huge deal. And of course, my parents um, um, accepted the Rebbe's invitation to come. And we came to New York. And it was, um, it was around Purim time, actually, when we, when we went there. And we got to have a Yechidus, which is a private audience with the Rebbe. And before going in for Yechidus, you would write a letter to, to, with, with different questions if you had and informing the Rebbe of certain things. And um, one of the things that my parents had asked the Rebbe about, which actually um, we didn't stay in for the whole Yechidus. It ended up being quite a long audience that we had with the Rebbe. And um, because there were some private things to be discussed, so we went into the Rebbe. The Rebbe actually asked all of us who were old enough questions about what we were learning in school. And um, the Rebbe asked my sister and I if we spoke Yiddish. See, the boys learned Yiddish at school. We didn't learn Yiddish. So the Rebbe asked if we learned Yiddish and we said no. And the Rebbe smiled and said, not yet. So uh, still working on it, getting closer. And um, and so each one of us, the Rebbe asked about what we were learning. And, and then we left the room, the children left the room and parents stayed to talk to the Rebbe about some private things. So um, one of the things that, that my, my parents had asked the Rebbe about was that my mother had been diagnosed with um, a, a, a really not good blood disorder and she was advised by her doctors that she shouldn't have any more children, okay? So up until that point, they had had Kanahara seven children. The baby had passed away, the youngest had passed away. And now the doctors were telling my parents that they mustn't have any more children. So this was one of the things that they wanted to ask the Rebbe advice about. The Rebbe looked at my mother directly and he said about this question uh, about your health and having children, the Rebbe said, I, I don't see any reason why you should not have more children. And basically the Rebbe encouraged my parents not to delay and to, to they, should have, they should have more children, not a problem. And the Rebbe gave brachas that they should be blessed with healthy children and, um, and, and that was it. We had our yechidas actually during that yechidas, my, my, um, the Rebbe cut my brother's hair. My father had brought with a pair of scissors and uh, we still have those scissors. I just recently used them to cut my, uh, my grandson Mordechai Svi's hair. We just had the opshe here, uh, right before everything went nuts and crazy. And uh, my parents went back home and the Rebbe's brachas came about and my mother became pregnant. When she went to have her appointment, the doctor was furious with my mother. And he said, I told you that you're not to have any more children. And I, I refused to take on your case. Well, actually, my mother was thrilled. Um, the health care was through the national health and she really didn't care for this doctor, but she had no choice. But now she was going to get a new doctor because this one refused to take care of her. Big punishment. And um, and they and she got her new doctor and the, and the doctor said, we're going to have to monitor you very, very carefully. So they um, sent her to have blood work and she went home. They called her up and they said, Mrs. Suffren, you've got to come back in. There is something, um, something wrong. The, the, we need to take your blood again. So she goes back in. She has another blood test. This happened three times. And they said, you know, we don't know what to tell you. 
but um, your blood is completely cleaned up from the all the issues that it had. So it turns out actually that the pregnancy, the hormones that were created because of the pregnancy cured my mother from the sickness that she had, which, um, and, and thank God, my mother went on to give birth to a beautiful, healthy boy. And they named him Yisrael Raphael, Raphael being because he cured my mother. Raphael is the angel of, of uh, curing. And it comes from the word Rafua, which, uh, which is healing. And after my brother, who actually I had to give him a mazel tov, he just made a bar mitzvah, which uh, I was supposed to be there. But I guess I wasn't supposed to be there, right? If I'm not... <laughs> here so mazel tov to Yisrael and his entire family and his wife Rivka and their children and Dov David who just had his bar mitzvah these are the Rebbe's miracles this uh this bar mitzvah that was just celebrated is a result of the brachas of the Rebbe um after my brother Yisrael was born um then my mother had Trina, Esther Trina, Baruch Ben Sion, Zoib David, Moshe Eliezer, and Fega. All the Rebbe's beautiful brachas and, and miracles. That's and a story. Yes, very, very beautiful story. And um, to tell you the truth, that the Rebbe gave a bracha, and these beautiful blessings were were uh, were actualized. To me, that's not the greatest part of this story, because that's a rebbe. A rebbe has a special neshama. A rebbe has a special connection, which is why we want to connect to a rebbe. To me. The great part of this story is my mother's trust and belief in Hashem and my mother's connection to a Rebbe. That here the doctors told her if she would get pregnant, God forbid, it would be, it, it would be a terrible thing. It could cost her her life, God forbid. But when the Rebbe looked at my mother and said, he doesn't see it could be a problem. My mother never gave it another thought. And here she, she was such a chassid of the Rebbe. Mind you, I have to tell you, she didn't grow up in a Hasidic family. My mother came from a Litvisha family, not from Hasidim. And, um, and, became such a great chassid. And to me, that is, is, is a very strengthening part of this, of this story. Of course, the, the Rebbe's brachas and stories of Sadiqim are also very, um, very strengthening and nurturing to my neshama and to all of our, to all of our neshamas. You can read stories of beautiful miracles of the Rebbe. There are many storybooks, and I do encourage you to read them. More importantly, I encourage you to learn what the Rebbe wanted us to learn from him, to learn what it means to have Ava Sisra, what it means to have concern and love for a fellow Jew, what it means to have Avas Torah, to have love of Torah, Avas Hashem, to have love of God, to, to be passionate about our purpose in this world, because that is empowering and that gives us 
purpose. And that gives us ultimately the ability to live life in a joyful way and in a way that every single moment of every day matters and makes a difference. And we ultimately can be that difference that will bring about the Ga'ula, that will bring about the redemption. God bless everybody. Please avail yourself of the beautiful, beautiful programs that are available on online, on Zoom, on Chabad.org, on, on all these different uh, venues that, uh, that you will be able to. And um, tomorrow evening, specifically, Chabad Boka is having a Meet the Shluchim. And um, that will be beautiful and interesting. So I look forward to seeing you all there. Um, if you want, we can stay on for another um, moment or two. If anybody has any questions, feel free. Honey? Yeah. I, I, I have questions. I'm trying to go on Torah Direct to see yeah. all your, your past and your husband's past.